again, as far as ADIs in every aircraft, it references the level horizon or references sea level always. There's no way that you can convince somebody of sound mind that if you take off from New York and immediately flip upside down, now your housing or your ADI is referencing upside down to you because you're upside down. It's right side up. It cannot deviate off level. It doesn't matter how much fuel you got in your tanks. It doesn't matter if you're a helicopter or an aerostat or a fighter jet. That gauge will always reference level. It has to, because otherwise it would be a pull reference. And if you could manipulate it, why would you even have it in the airplane or your aircraft? But if you go and take off two miles away, do a barrel roll, you're now flying upside down. At what point does that gauge show you back right side up? A half a hemisphere away? Is that what, is that what we're led to believe? Is that what we're supposed to believe? At what point does it, does it right itself? If you never flipped back over and continue flying level, you, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ludicrous to think that that thing compensates for curvature in straight and level flight. The big one that is oftentimes quoted is compensation for Coriolis effect while flying. And this is something I'd even taught my students about, and it's always assumed to be correct. We just assume. We're given the narrative from a young age and we everything is built upon that assumption, upon that theory. And so I thought I had the, the silver bullet. Ah, Coriolis effect. We always calculate for that. Well, as I began to look through the books and to look into the calculations given for Coriolis effect, the narrative began to fall apart even further. I began to see things I didn't notice when I was in school, such as Coriolis effect is actually never calculated for but is assumed to be a part of wind correction angle. Wind correction angle is one of the many calculations pilots of all kinds make while flying to correct against winds in whatever volume or section of air they're flying through, which it could be from any direction and you're flying through it, so you have to compensate a certain angle into that wind to hold a straight line. This is the problem. People don't research, man. What did they discover in Operation Fishbowl? What happened? that they had this like 400 kiloton something rocket or whatever flew over the Pacific Ocean. And when it reached a certain height, it blew up. It blew up, like it hit something. That's Operation Fishbowl. Do your research, man. All y'all, do y'all's research. That's, listen, this is why y'all are stuck. This is why y'all are stuck, man. Like, wake up. You probably just read the first two or three sentences that like, you know, Google showed you and you go, nope, that wasn't even, that has nothing to do with the firmament. No, dude, the whole thing was an experiment where they found that something is blocking their rockets from leaving this place. Like, dude, try, and I, dude, I used to think just like you, man, like I used to like, dude, I heard the flat earth theory like 10 years ago and I laughed and laughed and laughed and thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever. And so I didn't look into it at all. Like I didn't really just dig in. Bro, the truth will set you free, man. They lied. Our, our world is not a globe. We are not a tiny speck. There are not millions and billions and trillions and gigillions of other, of other life forms and all this and blah, 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 blah. UFOs are fallen angels, man. They're demons, bro. And it sounds crazy, but y'all are the ones believing that there's a bunch of other planets with other little alien life forms and they come to visit us and da, 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 da. Why aren't we visiting them? They're always visiting us. Oh, but they're like, you know, that they're so much more advanced. Dude, here's something funny. I know this is getting off topic, but it's just like kind of worked me up a little bit because this is the problem. You just want research. Dude, <laughs> remember whenever they used to start showing us like alien UFOs, like in the 50s and 60s? Remember those first pictures that came out? You remember how they all looked 50s, 60s style, like looked like tin can shaped like, you know, like a, a disc flying saucer. Notice that as our CGI and our technology advanced, all of the spacecrafts and UFOs started to advance. Huh, 
interesting. I thought they were so much more advanced than we are. Then why are they progressing at the same exact speed as we are? Think about it, man. So there's a lot of insane topics on the conspiracy iceberg, but one of the most interesting has to be Operation Fishbowl, which if you don't know was a real thing that happened in 1962 where the United States did a series of high altitude nuclear tests. And the reason they did this is because they had no idea what was going to happen. The crazy thing is that guy right there, Oppenheimer, the creator of the nuke, was terrified that a high altitude detonation could cause a mass extinction by lighting the entire atmosphere on fire, which thankfully didn't happen. A conspiracy theory about this operation is that some believe it was an attempt to break through the firmament that some believe exists. Another cool thing is they named Operation Fishbowl because of the shape the nuclear cloud made when it was that high in the atmosphere that looked like a fishbowl. But tell me, why do you think they did these tests? Apparently we never went to outer space. Okay, so there is a theory that we never been to outer space because of a transparent barrier that surrounds our entire planet. And that past this barrier isn't open space or a vacuum, but actually water. Now that all might sound extremely crazy, but back in 1962, the United States launched a couple nukes into the sky to allegedly test out the atmosphere's reaction, or that's what they want us to believe. But some say they were actually trying to see if they could crack that invisible barrier. And what's even crazier, is that this operation was called Operation Fishbowl. This theory is further speculated, as many people have said if you look into the sky at the stars, with your own eyes or zoom in on them with a camera, it seems to be twinkling or shining through a liquid-like substance. Oh, you can't see 15 miles. That's impossible. No, it's not. Yeah, I can. I do it all the time while I'm driving, and I look over, and I see in the distance... The city that I'm getting to, which is over 15 miles away. I can see it. It's in my view. On a clear day, when you check your weather app, it'll tell you how far of a distance that you can see. And sometimes I've gotten like 10 miles plus. Curvature dropping every three miles is a theory. On a clear day from Lake Michigan, you can see the Chicago skyline. You can see Chicago. This is real testable science, not pseudoscience. So I can understand why you would be upset when it's clearly possible. Water is clearly level. The horizon is clearly horizontal. Just use the scientific method. Just use it. Use it. The whole method. So anything you see that's space travel related is fake as anything being NASA related is fake as did not happen. Nobody has been to the moon and no human being has ever been to outer space. That's right. The furthest out a human being has ever been is what is known as low earth orbit. No human being has penetrated the Van Allen belt and been to outer space. And no, we've never been to the moon and the moon is not even something you can land on. It's translucent. You can see through it with a high powered telescope. You can look this up. It is exactly what you see. It's a piece of plasma suspended in the sky and there is no dark side of the moon. It's all bullshit. If we go to the moon in the next 30 days, it's probably the first time we've been there. You see, man hasn't gone back to the moon in over 50 years because of something called the Van Allen belt, and we destroyed that technology. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and it's a painful process to build it back again. Not only was the technology destroyed, but all the telemetry data is missing, such as Gene Krantz said. Uh, seen anything that indicates the telemetry data is even in existence and as I said even if we had it we don't have the machines to play it back. People have physically gone to these archives where they're left with what say David Williams told them. This film you're making now what is it? Doesn't have it either. The Smithsonian right. doesn't have it. Right. Johnson doesn't right. have it. Right. We, we've been unable to, to, to track it down. I mean we don't know uh, where this this telemetry data ended up and we don't know the what what path it may have taken so 
<laughs> into the Van Allen belt, NASA put out a video called Trial by Fire, hosted by NASA engineer Kelly Smith, who said, As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. These areas of radiation we allegedly don't know how to get past, and this is why the Orion capsule is being created and tested. This is affirmed by astronauts such as Terry Virts. The plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is, that is much bigger than what we have today, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board to, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go, and this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to. And also the female astronaut, Kathleen Rubens. And this is really the beginning, I think, of human beings leaving low Earth orbit. I certainly plan on being around to see that. This is the Orion capsule. Look at the barriers on this thing. Now you're going to tell me that mankind went to the moon 50 years ago, six times over 200,000 miles there and back in this? Is this like sheet metal? Why does this look like some type of tinfoil? Just looks poorly made. Check out the rover. Real legit. And then we could also talk about their astronaut suits. And I know what you're thinking, like, oh, I mean, that's, that's not too bad. Let's back up a few years. You, what about this guy? What about this one? I am not trying to be belligerent, nor am I saying I couldn't be wrong. I'm just pointing out that. And you don't want to do the research, don't do the research. But just consider the option that what you've been told is complete bullshit. And the burden of proof is on the heliocentrics to prove that it's round. And they can't do it. Nobody can do it. All they can do is tell you that it's round. They can't produce pictures. They can't, you know, justify airlines. They don't use the rotation of the Earth in the military. Snipers don't use the curvature of the Earth. Missile guidance systems, radar, sonar. None of these things can work with a globe Earth. None of them. Long-range photography, gravity cannot be explained experimentally. The forces, density and buoyancy, period. End of discussion. It's just insane. Satellites, come on. Do you really care how you, you can get, you can get Hubble satellite images because they're microwave, right? And they're, they're composites, they're images from data. But we can't even get 720p football on Sundays over satellite dish. Come on. And you're paying for it. You're paying for the nonsense. You're paying how, we're paying, I don't know how much, $300 for AT&T for shitty stuff. That should be free. We're paying for cable. That should be free. You know, gig speed cable. That's so great. What's the speed of light? Why isn't there fiber to every single desktop? If it's, you know, it's not the infrastructure. What do we continue to pay for? We have, you know, bearing fiber optic lines. Gee, thanks. So you can make more money. Charge us more for less which should be free energy forget about new you know coal uh, green energy is bullshit forget about gas it's not fossil fuels it's an endless supply we already have nuclear reactors we already know about thorium reactors that's been around for what 30 40 years we know there's alien technology we, uh, ufos bending space time is it that far of a stretch to think that they have some sort of energy field that does that? And then what about the Tesla coil? We already know about that. That's all legit. Why are we still paying for and Why am I paying Georgia Power $300 a month to give me the energy that's rightfully ours?